All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing plus minus. In this question, we're going to learn about a new data type called float. And what the question is, they're giving us an array and they want us to count the number of positive elements, negative elements, and zero elements. So in this case, two positive, two negative, one zero. And we want to divide it by the total length of the array to get the ratio of positive numbers, ratio of negative, ratio of zero. Okay, so assuming we didn't know anything about floats, we might start to code something like this. So we have our positive count, our negative count, and our zero count. Next, we need to read through our array. We can do a for loop um, where we go through each number of our array. And if our number is greater than zero, then our positive count increments by one. Um, else, if our number is equal to zero, our zero count increments by one. And finally, everything else should be negative, and we increment that by one. Uh, to solve the challenge, we need to print out the ratios. So that's printed out. We have positive count over the length of the array. You can get it like that. And then we'll do the same thing for the negative count. And then finally, the zero count. So that looks good. We'll try running it. Then you can see our output seems to be all zeros. So in this case, we have um, six numbers and four of them are positive. So we should get something like four out of six, but instead we have zero. And the reason for that is because integers are can't store decimals. And in Java, what we have is, and what happens is we did, you know, positive count divided by the array length. These two are both integers. So we essentially have an integer divided by an integer. And that returns to us an integer. And integers, um, for example, let's say we have two bits here. Let's say we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 to represent 0, 1, 2, 3. There's no really a way for us to represent, you know, 0 0.4 or 0 0.5. So what happens is everything after the decimal, we just truncate, we cut it off. Um, so that's why when we output, everything turned out to be zero. So it doesn't matter if it's really close, like 0 0.999, 0 0.999 or 0 0.0001. As long as we're trying to put it inside an integer, everything after the decimal point gets cut off. So to solve that, we're going to learn how to use a new data type called float. OK, so float is like integer, another data type. So you could declare it like this if you wanted to float, you know, x equals something. But instead, what we can do is we can actually just tell Java to treat this number as a float by casting it. So to cast it, we do this uh, bracket and then the data type bracket in front. So this tells Java like positive count. I know it's an int, but for now, for this calculation, I want you to treat it as a float. So here we have another float, and here we have another float. So when we have a float divided by integer, um, we'll get a float back. So if we try and run this code again, we can see that now our output matches the expected output, but not quite, right? Because you can see here, you know, it seems like we have three, four, we have six, seven, but here it's three and six, seven. And in the question, they actually tell us, um, Let's see. Answers with absolute errors of up to 10 to negative 4 are acceptable. So that's why it still passes. But you know, we might be wondering, why are there errors in the first place? So Computer File has actually a really great video on floating point numbers that I encourage you to watch. But the high level is something like this. So at high level, let's say for an integer, uh, we have 
we have a number line 0, 1, 2, 3 and let's say we have two bits to represent our information. Um, so two bits gives us 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, all of these ways to represent information. And here we can say, well, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and we're happy. But let's imagine another case, you know, and to simplify, maybe it's just everything between 0 and 1. If we didn't care about decimals, um, we can represent this as just a single bit. You know, 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and that's the end of the story. But what if we did care about decimals? So we want a way to represent, say, uh, 0 0.5. Then we might say, well, let's go with 0 is still 0, uh, maybe halfway through. 1, 0, let's call that 0 0.5. Um, and then here, halfway between that, 0 0.25. Maybe we'll let that be 0 0.25. And then 1, 1, well, if we add up 0 0.25 and 0 0.5, we get 0 0.75. That seems reasonable. So 0 0.75. But now with our two bits, we only had a way to represent each of these numbers. So that means if we get a number where we want our calculation to end up with, say, 0 0.3, um, we don't have a way of representing 0 0.3, and our best, closest solution is something like 0 0.25. Um, so this is a simplified version of what's going on. Um, again, you can watch the video if you want to learn more. Um, but it does sort of explain at a high level of why these these small inaccuracies exist. Anyways, that's the end of this question, and I'll see you on the next one.